All right, our second presenter is Ms. Savannah Tipo. Um, she came to us in one of our ways that sometimes people come to us, they first learn to teach outside of the classroom, literally outside of the classroom, and then uh, come to us because of the tremendous experience that that then Savannah can bring to her own teaching. Um, so Savannah is one of ours that didn't graduate last year, but I won't mention when. Um, and I'm also always thrilled when there's an earth science type person who can come to our program. So Savannah's topic is teacher-student connectedness, written teacher feedback and students' academic and social experiences in the eighth grade science classroom. Savannah. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna walk around a little bit. So try to keep it to a minimum, but I need to move. Okay. So for me, one of the hardest things as um, a middle school student was connecting with my teachers in the classroom. So as a middle school student, I can remember that I was a little bit disengaged in the content, and I really believe that it had a lot to do with my interactions with the teachers. Research, research also shows that students want to feel a sense of belonging in the classroom. They want to know that teachers care about who they are, and not just their academic care. They don't want to just know that they care about their grades. They want to know that they care about them as an individual. So my research focus is that I want to understand if me being in the classroom impacts students' ideologies okay, and their academic and social experiences. And I want to understand if I implement something like feedback, so I'm looking at feedback and understanding if that, if I implement that, will that impact the social and academic experiences also? Research questions for this study are very similar to the purpose. So my research questions, like, I'm, like I said, I'm looking at academic and social experiences in the science classroom, and I'm looking at how can I improve my overall experience with my students? How can I build that relationship? The design that I decided to take was that I started with three class periods. So the reason why I chose three class periods is because I had pre-8P, but also regular 8th grade science. So my 8th grade science classes um, consisted of 51 8th grade students ages 12 through 14. Um, the demographics included culturally, very culture diverse, 77% um, um, free and reduced lunch. The mixed method study that I took was pre-surveys, um, followed by interventions and interviews, and then a post-survey. The measures include, so I'm gonna start with my survey. The survey that I distributed um, came from Mindset Works. And I use a scale, like the scale of um, one through 10, or excuse me, one through five, and disagree a lot and disagree a lot. And so the things that I focused on, the domain, were the basic intelligence of the students. How do they actually perceive intelligence as a whole? And then also science difficulty. Do they enjoy um, science work that is difficult in the science classroom? And the perception of who they are. So do they feel dumb when they have to learn science or have to work, learn work that's a little bit harder than they anticipated? Also, the interventions that I incorporated. So the feedback I'm looking at. I looked at two things in the science classroom. I looked at post-it notes and letters. I'm gonna talk about the post-it notes first. So the post-it notes, I wrote 22 total post-it notes. And I did not write a post-it note to every student. This was a very sporadic um, implication in the classroom. So I used it to redirect and reinforce behavior that I was seeing. So for example, I have your ability to work through problems is impressive. I am proud of how hard you work. So I'm reinforcing behavior that I'm already seeing in the classroom. And this is not like you and you're being disrespectful. If you need to have a conversation with me, please let me know. So I'm trying to redirect that behavior during the lab with the student, rather than sending them to the office and writing them up. So I'm trying to redirect their behavior. The letters, I included 51 letters, and 51 letters, so that's 51 letters total, one for each student. And how I did this is I focused on a class period, um, class period every Sunday, so I focused on period two on one Sunday, followed by the other two periods. And so I took the same structure for each letter. Each letter included, um, I hope you had a great weekend. Let's start off with something a little positive for the students. And I noticed that last week you worked very hard in class. So I'm saying I noticed something about you as an individual. Um, I also said you received great grades on your assignment, you've been very dedicated and it shows you your work. So that's just an example of what I did. But some other things that I incorporated were, um, I noticed you're really loyal to helping people in the classroom. So I'm trying to incorporate different, um, kind of different methods here. Also, I don't have it up here, but I it did include three questions following this. I said two questions that were very academic. So how can you ask for help when you need help in the classroom? How can you um, help, those, help others around you? And then one question that was very specific to them as individuals. So I have to get to kind 
kind of know them, observe who they were. So I'm asking them, I'm, or I'm saying to them, for example, if you could play any sport in for major league, what would you play? And then I answer the question myself in hopes that the students would respond. And I'm um, sorry, one more thing. Five weeks total. So I did these, incorporated these over five weeks in two units. So five weeks total. So here's an example of the student letters. So just um, a little bit example of the colorfulness and um, the length of the letters in general. And so I have the I notice followed by the three questions, and this is just some from one class period. So my interview questions, like I said, five weeks, um, and following the interventions, I did the interview questions with 10 students. The reason why I chose 10 students is because they received post-it notes and letters. So those students received post-it notes and letters. Um, some of the questions that were I asked were, um, have you, do you remember a favorite teacher? And what did that favorite teacher do to make them a favorite teacher? Um, do you enjoy going to science class currently? Now that I'm here, um, do you, um, are grades more important to you, or is feedback more important to you? And then also, how did the notes make you feel when I wrote them to you? What was an initial response? The survey results show that there actually was an increase in kind of that relationship, and also students actually felt more intelligent following the interventions. So students showing, we'll start at question one, I'm move around. Um, question one, so no matter how much intelligence you have, you can always increase it. Students actually, um, the mean got a little bit higher there, and also there was a significant difference. And um, this, the standard deviation is very close. So students did feel that no matter how much intelligence you have, you can increase that intelligence in the science classroom. Also, um, I'm going to skip question two for right now. I'm going to come back to it, but I'm going to go to question three. You can learn new things about science, and you can change your basic level of, in science, level of intelligence in the science classroom. This was the most significant thing for me because not only did students feel that they can change their basic level of intelligence, but you can also learn new things about science in the science classroom. So their mean distribu distribution got a little bit higher and also still a little spread out on that standard deviation, but overall significant. So I'm gonna skip um, this one here, I'm gonna go to five. So I like working on science best when I can do it without making any mistakes. As you can tell here, there was definitely a change but not necessarily the change that I was hoping for. <laughs> Students did not want to work on science without making any mistakes. And if you take a look at question two, they say that I like science work that is difficult even if I make mistakes, but I don't like it best. So I don't like it best if I make mistakes. Okay, so I can kind of explain this. What I think is that there's a lot of testing going on right now in the school. There's a lot of um, expectations of the students. And so I think that your ability to make mistakes wasn't really something that they could, they had time to do when I was there. Okay, and then not too much of a change over here. Um, obviously, I wish it did a little bit more, but um, overall, definitely a change in one, two, three, and five. So my student interview, my results, the three themes that I pulled from the interviews um, include self confidence, motivation, and then individuality within a community. So following the interventions, um, students felt accomplished. When I gave them the letter or post note, they felt accomplished. They also felt that um, it increased their confidence in the classroom. So just by writing a little note or writing a post note, they felt that their confidence increased. Motivation, they said it was like a coach telling them good job. And it makes them want to try harder. And also one student said, maybe his attitude would change a little bit faster if I implemented it in earlier in the year. <laughs> And individuality within the community, um, students want to know that we're here to help them and that we don't just care about our teaching, right? We want to know, we want them, they want us to care about who they are. So the summary for me is that in such a short amount of time, only five weeks, I had a huge impact on how these students felt with their self-confidence and their motivation in the classroom. Using something like written teacher feedback, where it wasn't just a grade on a paper, I was able to improve self-confidence and also motivation, which led, as we can see in, in our survey in um, period five, there was a change in mindset. So students actually, their intelligence increased. Overall, this created um, greater um, teacher-student connection. Okay, so I felt, they felt that I not only was invested in them, but they were also invested in me and overall healthier classroom. My implications as a teacher is that um, 
I never want my students to feel disconnected from the content, from the learning, or from the classroom because of me as a teacher. I want them to come in every day and understand that this is a trusting, positive environment for them. And so as a secondary teacher, it is very difficult for us to reach all students, right? We always wonder, how are we gonna reach everyone? Well, creating something just like a student letter into a science notebook, or giving a student a letter, is an easy way to get to connect when you don't have that time. I originally did, but then I realized my research is a lot more than just the growth mindset. And so that's what I kind of was focusing on, and then it just shifted a little bit when I got into the classroom, where it wasn't just mindset anymore. And it was just also that relationship that I have with the students. Yes, Is there any particular reason why you chose the students to give post-it notes or the letters to, or like what the time intervals for? Yeah, so I did record all of that data, so I do have the time that I re gave the students the notes and also um, why I gave them the notes, but the reason why I used it is to mostly redirect and to reinforce behavior, rather than just saying, hey, good job. It was like, I noticed you're doing something, or you're being a leader in your group right now, so I was trying to... Um, I was just trying to incorporate as many as I could with the amount of time that I had. So, you know, being a teacher, a science teacher, it's kind of difficult to reach every student with a no. Yes? How quickly of the event, whatever the, the behavior was, you know, whatever happened before or after? Maybe yeah. I can actually give you an example of that. So one of the students that I um, gave the note to, the one about, um, he was being disrespectful. So he removed himself from the group. They were doing lab work. He removed himself, and he threw his papers on the ground. Um, he went and sat by himself, so I wrote that note really quick while the other students were working. So I was trying to pay attention to the whole group, but also noticing what he was doing. He read the note, put the note into his pocket, and then um, he picked up his papers off the floor and then replaced himself back into the group. During the interview, I asked him, how did that note make you feel? And he said, you, you decided to reach out to me instead of sending me to the office. That means a lot. And so something like that, just that little impact in the classroom, rather than me writing him up and sending him to the office, built that relationship with me and him in the classroom. Yes. So a little bit of a follow-up. Um, how frequent, how did the number of notes that you wrote, how did that change over time? but more and more and you saw sort of that positive mm -hmm. response I, I did actually. And so um, I have to say that uh, that period five, yeah. I did incorporate a little bit more because it was a smaller class. And so just being a new teacher was just very overwhelming in general. Um, but just that class I did incorporate a little bit more and it wasn't really, there's no difference in behavior or anything like that. But yes, as there was a change, especially with one of those students, I did write him two more notes. So he did two more notes following that. And he said that those help him in so many different ways, like mental health and um, just that I was reaching out to him when he was having a hard time. So back to that kind of list of different questions you asked that were the agreement scale questions. That yes. Had results on. That kind of interaction you had, how, where would you maybe see it manifest itself in those kinds of questions which are related to the mindset growth? Okay. So which so one was that? Back to the slide. Um, that, that one. Okay. That one. So yeah. that's where I'm like, okay, as you do this sort of building relationship piece, where would you expect to see the most change happen? Most change? Yeah. Well, I'm hoping that the most change would be that um, they, even though work is difficult, that they want to work still without quitting. Sure. I think that's kind of what my overall... So when science is difficult... Yeah, number when science is still quit. number four, five, yeah, four. But you didn't see it change, so that's why... I, I didn't, and that's... Okay. Yeah. So that's okay. I mean, I think you're, you're right. That may be where you will... That's kind of... Yeah. And I wish that I did implement it sooner, and it would be cool to implement those types of things. Like, even the letters, like writing, taking time out to write a letter a weekend to a student is now building a relationship with that one student. Okay. I'm in if anybody else has any more questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you.